G'day and welcome to the Trunners. I'm Execute, joined today by Algrid and Space Simone. How are you all doing? Good. Good. Doing good. Space is, space is good and you and I are fried. Yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> but, but Space is having some technical difficulties. Uh, it's just how you're free Well, yeah, I say good, <laughs> but it's actually terrible. He's freestyling there with his microphone. He's actually having to hold it in his hand, uh, so we're glad he's with us at all. So you have, you, you, I, I'm hoping it doesn't affect your own videos too much, mate, to be honest with you, so yeah. Oh, yeah, no, my videos are screwed for the next week or two. Oh, well, we'll try and help you out in any way we can. All right, yeah. um, so we've obviously all, all had a chance to look at the RSI Galaxy, so we're going to kind of go over our thoughts and um, impressions. I think we'll start with you, Space, because me and Agra talked a little bit about this yesterday. So can, can you just give us uh, your kind of basic rundown, and then we'll go from there? Of uh, the Galaxy? Yes, please. It's... Man. It is a, a cool idea for a ship, but to, to be honest, I don't care about it at all. <laughs> it's, okay. just, it, it's another big ship, and I know I'm probably dipping a little bit into the uh, into the drum. So I've been almost out of it com for the last week, so I haven't really been that involved in kind of the, the discourse and stuff going on around this. But, I, you know, I'm mostly in agreement that I don't care too much for it. I don't think I'm going to see it anytime soon. Mm -hmm. Large ships aren't something that I'm interested in anyways i've yep. never um never backed uh pledged or ccu'd for anything bigger than an msr mm. uh, actually no the msr was gifted to me i don't think i've ever backed for anything bigger than like a i don't know a, a nomad maybe or something like that I, I tend to stick to smaller ships so i'm not that impressed mm. with it i think it's cool that it's a general purpose large ship for the people who will need that mm. um but, you know, overall, I, I think it's just, you know, another large RSI ship. So you're so basically you're the most sensible in front of and you're the opposite of our grid. <laughs> that, that's what I heard right there. <laughs> I also just have no money to spend. Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> I've got no money to As you spend can see, I have to, either, so. I have to carry my microphone. <laughs> I'm bare minimum. Ghetto Space Tomato or Ghetto Tomato. I don't know. What, I don't even call it. We have to have a nickname for that for for the uh, for the next week or so. Um. So for what's the ship then? I just to ask you, what is the ship that you think is most like the uh, RSI Galaxy that we currently have? What, what what does it tread on now? The Galaxy comes in. What is? The, what's your thoughts on that? Um. Well, the modularity sets it apart from other ships quite a bit, but I guess it has a decent amount in line with kind of the Carrick, but less, less than that it's a specialty like the Carrick is and more just that it's mm. a, um, well, I mean, as far as gameplay is pretty, pretty standard, just like the Carrick, uh, you're not really doing anything special with it. It's a great place for multiple people to get in and have like support of medical beds or uh, space for a vehicle, space for cargo, stuff like that. So. Where the game is right now, mm -hmm. I would say it's kind of similar to a Carrick in terms of size and use. So for me, I don't want to speak for Algrid, but for me, it's the Caterpillar, actually, because the Carrick also comes with repair and medical facilities already on board, as well as the modules. And there's only a, uh, a 13, mm. mil, uh, 13 meter difference between the Caterpillar and the Carrick in length. And the, um, the Caterpillar is five meters longer than the RSI Galaxy. So I think they are. Is very, it really? Yeah, they're very mm. similar to each other. Um, uh, that ship's small. But you you are not wrong because a lot of people jumped on the Carrick from the from the get go, and um, once Sarah and I saw it, well, Agra, you speak for yourself. You you tell me, was it the Caterpillar for you? For me, it, it's always sat between Caterpillar and Six Hundred I. Yeah, um, I, I'll give you Six Hundred I as well because of the um the, the module on that as well. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So so I, I've always, just, yeah deceptively smaller than I thought it was. I haven't looked too much into it, but just from the pictures, I thought it was bigger than that. Mm. Oh, it, it's, it's, bigger than, it's bigger than a 600i, but about the same size as a Carrick. Mm. But you see the same types of things in weapons, in, mm. in module ideas, mm. flowing between both of them. Mm. But it's, it's I think also it's, got problems. I think it's the width, yeah. I think it's the width that mm. makes it deceptively look a lot bigger. Um, so, mm. yeah. Um, so, for me, um, the modules themselves that have been in this sale don't really speak to me that much. So, for me, like you, Space, I think I, I can pass on this. But um, what what I've been recommending to people, and I'd recommend this to you as well, if you, if you, if you are so inclined. I know you don't go to buy bigger ships. But what if I told you you could lock in... I don't buy any ships. 
<laughs> what, what, what if I could tell you, though, you could lock in this price for $5? So if you had $5 credit floating around, do you think that that is a potentially good investment just to sit on? Yeah, if I had $5 dollars in credit and i wanted the ship sure yeah so basically you can pick up a valkyrie to galaxy ccu for five dollars so at a later date if you decided you changed your mind you could come back and get this for the original cheaper price mind you though it doesn't come with any modules but like the endeavor and a lot of the other modular ships we talk about you could just mm. earn the modules in game so yeah right so that, that that's a recommendation for us on that um the real big thing for me, if we actually kick it over to the browser, um, is when you go to, to look at the modules here, it says others, manufacturing and other modules coming at a later date. That's the module I'm interested in. I don't know about you two. <laughs> that's the There's one the that, carrot. Well, yeah, it's the, and, and a few people read that one. And uh, for me, like it puts this now in line with the, the Pioneer and the rumored MCV. So we now have, this is the really crazy thing about the ship. This ship is now three of the large manufacturing core pillars of gameplay. You've got medical mm. refining and now manufacturing. Um, so, so yeah. I don't know. Agrid, what, what, what's your thoughts? Does that change it for you, having that module possibly be a thing? The, the manufacturing module, certainly, because it's one of the things, you know, they've always said, oh, you, you know, you can, you're not going to be actually crafting things or making things. So this is, what, what do they mean by manufacturing? Where are they going? How far are we going mm -hmm. down that rabbit hole? Yeah. Um, because that's the first time they've really put us into that into that aspect is it more mm. you know i suppose growing plants is it um yeah building building outposts mm. so yeah mm. well what i'm interested in is why are they introducing modularity again i think this might even be the test bed for modularity i asked myself that same question space but um i throw that back to you do you mm. think that's what this could be is because there are a lot of rsi ships that are now in this i think there's five of them we were talking about before the show where they could work on these in parallel and this could also be the one that they use to to sort out modularity and see mm. if it's a thing it it could be but it's if it is I, it's just more disappointment in my opinion they need to stop introducing new ships to introduce things that other ships have already been promised to have mm -hmm. and you know, i worry that they're going to do something like that for say drones when we have a bunch of ships that are supposed to use drones and then they go and they introduce a new concept ship that comes with drones and say well this is going to be how we introduce it mm -hmm. um i think they had a great opportunity to introduce modularity with the retaliator which which i think we all kind of expected that to be they where also, they were headed they also had the m50 on the roadmap this year as well and i believe that was going to be the very first one because it was literally just an engine swap um so yeah no i, I don't disagree with you um i, I almost it, wonder it, if this ship is too powerful from a modular perspective though like three of the it, core pillars is quite large do, do you think that one of the reasons for that is because reworking the old ships is going back into old tech and having to rejig everything whereas this they can actually just test the modularity while they're working from a a, a blank canvas if you like so they mm. don't have any of the old old code or anything interfering yeah I'm overall not... this is definitely a more cost effective way for them to do it mm. but yeah. you know that's not necessarily my <laughs> that's not what yeah, I want. Yeah, it, it's not necessarily as, as what a customer. we want. No, yeah. that's right. It, it, we'd like we'd love to see the modules, the carrot, the the cats, the um, um, you know, all all the other modules worked out. And I'm just going blank on yeah on ships. That yeah, I can't even think modules. of them all. So you actually bring up something there too that we brought up before. To our grid was you you mentioned the caterpillar. So I actually mm. think they. Um, as a part of the Q and A for this, they almost need to talk about the mod, uh, you know, maybe two of the modules they're planning for the Caterpillar, yep. because um, this ship heavily, obviously, treads on the Caterpillar. But after all these years, we've never actually been told what modules are coming yep. for that. So it's more up in the air than ever. And and again, I know all these people that have hold on, held on to the Caterpillar for years and years and years, waiting to hear what yep. the modules waiting are for be. that modularity. Yeah, yeah, um, that command module. We all want to race it around. Um, oh. Well, not just that. The, the 
that that ship is meant to... the actual compartments yeah, yeah they're, yeah, they're, they're actual th- compartments. Th- there was 11 that they talked about um years and years ago i can link we, we did a, um a ship scrutiny on it but we can link you um the older videos if you're interested some really juicy stuff back there in those videos mm. um and they went uh, um the medical there was medical modules um there was a chop shop there chop troop, shop transport yeah um armories a whole bunch of different ones they talked about and i think that if you would do to do medical modules though when it's four small compartments you start to have questions like does that mean you can have a tier one bed in one two tier beds in another and then three tier beds in the third like how do they do that yeah. like like is it is it just a way more modular and customizable ship so can you have like mm. a tier one bed with a chop shop like like how does that all work yeah um, yeah modules are they're a weird complication because they add so many variables into a ship that it's it must be a nightmare when it comes to to balancing and when you look at the way that the ships are progressing and the caterpillar like you said has all these different choices at some point that will have to be balanced along with all the other gameplay complications that are coming in and it's just it's it's a that's a big job Mm. so i I think back with the cat i think back to when they said when they 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 made it so it had those four standard you know they, they fixed the length because if they were shrinking the length like they originally thought, it would be a new ship every time you you added a module. Mm-hmm. And I wonder whether that's the same type of thing, whether the cat with that envisaged massive mo- um, modularity puts it in the same category as almost as the endeavors with its modularity is just causing so many issues mm. that you hold that, you push that off as long as you can just because it's a nightmare yeah. to... I think I think you've do. kind of hit the nail on the head there with the caterpillar specifically. You've also got the doors that come down and all that stuff. That there's lots of technical issues with that ship mm. specifically. So um, not picking it as the option is true. But then I go back to what um, Space said: the Retaliator would be a much better option. Yep. But the other thing, um, to Space, is that is currently in the middle of a rework. So I wonder if that is actually the one they're doing because you know how they do change it because of the door. You know how they they move mm-hmm. the, yeah. the docking collar mm-hmm. from the floor to the to the wall, but then the outside wall was on an angle, and they they had it go in on the roadmap for six months. It doesn't take six months to fix a door, so they're obviously doing something else with that one as well. So maybe maybe that is the test bed. You could be right on the money. It's just something mm-hmm. they haven't really talked about. And when they were working on that, they kind of went, oh well, maybe we'll do more modules. And it, it's it's uh. I want to say I would have a lot more confidence in this, in the modularity talk. It, 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 the biggest worry for me introducing this ship is the fact that they're bringing modularity back into the limelight. Mm. And they've had a really, really good recent uh, opportunity to talk about that, which is CitizenCon mm. with Ship Talk. They, they should have said something about modularity at that point if they planned on introducing another ship, because now, once again, they're throwing another wrench, mm. another unknown into the field of ships um and we don't know what they're thinking about it and when it comes to the open development this is one of those things that i think would have been great for them to make some sort of a statement about so we knew what their thinking was on it you know they don't have to tell us exactly what they're doing but explaining what the thought process is behind bringing modularity back into the limelight like this would have been really i think a good good thing to do for the backers yeah I do think they did talk about modularity at CitizenCon as they talked they? about the 600i. So they talked about how they've reworked the 600i it's to true. get those modules working. He's mm-hmm. technically and so correct. That was really the first. That's the first bit they talked about. And mm-hmm. then I can, if you think of this as kind of a 600i in, inspired by, mm-hmm. you've got a ship with a single module, 600i with either a single module of you know you've got the 600i, you either attach a touring module or your exploration model module. This is a ship where you either attach your cargo module, your hospital module, or your uh, refinery module. So in that sense, they're very similar. Um, and that, and after that, you, then everything falls <laughs> goes away to different ships. But mm. you can see that, the, to me, there's almost a mental process of 600i1 module. This is, a, this is just an extension of that, almost as an extension of that type of thinking. But then it raises the question of, of, of the cat problem. And... and mm. I'd love to. I'd love to at least know for the cat what modules they're planning or thinking of. Mm. Oh, so, now because we had the concept of them, but they never said they never committed to them, and it'd yeah. be nice to know where they're where they're thinking. Right, and we saw retaliator modules in ISC. I think in twenty twenty one. Yeah. Um, 
did they give any sort of idea when they were talking about the 600i modules if they were actually planning on having the modularity work when the 600i rework was done actually they or didn't. did they just say that they it was a thing yeah they didn't that's true and technically yeah. they still sell that thing as separate ships but you can also buy the modules it's a really weird one um i guess it's yeah, in line it with is, other it... ones but yeah um in, in game at the moment you can't swap them over so eventually it'd be cool to see just the 600i in game mm -hmm. and then the two modules that you can purchase and they could even have them purchased from different places around stand that would be kind of interesting it, it would be weird to see a 600i without a module attached yeah <laughs> yeah well well that, that was something that came up and um someone mm -hmm. found it in the q a it just means that you can't access that space with the ship it's essentially just a void um, someone yeah. was saying, why couldn't you technically put cargo in the RSI if it was empty? Like you could, even though it would damage the ship, but they, they've literally kind of stated that it will just be a void. There's no way to access that void because there are just be a hole in yeah, the ship. No, no. Well, no, technically it's just not in the ship. So you've got to think about there's an internals of the ship and there's the externals from a gameplay perspective. You know how there's like a room. If you just delete the room, you can't walk into it so yeah yeah um I, but people are visualizing like it would be an empty room that you could walk into but there just isn't any way to get into that room because it doesn't exist um and yeah. so, so so they, they want to put cargo or something in there even if it's just loose and bashes and kind of damages the ship they still want to be able to do that but no you can't um mm -hmm. one thing i really want to put uh, point out that I is the reason I paused was mm. Badge just pointed this out to me. They have all these little icons, right? And at the time, it's like, okay, so that's you know, that's cargo. This one's cargo. This one's medical and medical and mm. cargo again, cargo again. And I, whatever you get what I'm trying to say. Uh, but uh, this is refining, sorry. But what, what mm. he actually found was these same icons were on one of the ISCs and they had all the icons for the HUD. So these are literally. Uh, they in their really unsubtle way telling us what each one of these means. So this is the refining um, mm. icon and stuff like that. So I thought that okay. was interesting. So we're probably going to see a lot more of these uh, coming down the track. Um, so yeah, just yeah. Just, a, just a thought for everyone watching. Um, all right. Um, is there anything else you guys kind of want to add? I'm I'm kind of getting to that point where I, for me, the ship is, it's a cool ship. It's got a really cool interior. It's the new flavor of the month and all that. But when I stand back, um, you tell me this space, right? Because because obviously you and I come at this from different perspectives because you, you, you know, you kind of don't want to put too much money into the game and I get that. But I, I have an Endeavor as an example, right? And mm -hmm. it is technically the capital hospital. So for me, I can pass on this because this is a large hospital. I can just take my Endeavor, earn some money there with that and purchase downwards because I've got the capital one. I can just purchase downward. Do you kind yeah. I know, I know you don't agree with the whole buy huge, big ships thing, but if I've already <laughs> got the capital one, I don't really need the large one, do I? Cause I can no. very quickly earn down. So that that's no, where I'm and, at for me. And like you said, I, I approach it differently in that. Yeah. I just don't feel like anything uh, needs to be purchased in order to progress in the game, or at least the game yeah. shouldn't be in a way that you feel the need to purchase. And that, you know, there's going to be a lot of balancing that goes into that and they're going to play with that. And I'm sure I won't be happy with a lot of the ways they play with it. Um, but I definitely don't, this doesn't feel like the kind of ship that you need to get with, uh, with cash. Mm -hmm. this, this is, I think mm -hmm. there are opportunities to make good money with this, but when you're talking about a ship kind of like the, the Endeavor, um, or even one of the ships that's purpose built for more of the industrial and money making kind of stuff. This doesn't really feel like it falls into that category, in my opinion. Okay, really quickly, do you think the medical Pisces was made for this? Considering no. the size of the, so the hangar is the perfect size for the medical Pisces. So it's like it is perfect. Yeah, but the Pisces, I think the Pisces is a good enough idea that you would just make it for the game regardless it's a very okay. like it's a no-brainer if you wanted to have a quick and easy medical ship that could get in and get out like i couldn't think of a better ship than the pisces to be honest well uh, badges is a big fan he upgraded he, he like he's a big fan of the normal pisces and when this dropped he just upgraded straight to it so he can do his um he's uh he's a big bunker his medical funds. Big, big bunker missions guy so he he's yeah. gonna use it for all those so yeah the Pisces is is a ship that I can definitely get excited mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. compared to the Galaxy. That's because, I mean, you got so much utility. You have so much use case uh, in such a small package. The Pisces already was 
the smallest ship that you could carry two people in. Mm. Now it's the smallest ship that you can put a, a patient in. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's yeah, quite strong. And I've got to correct you there, both space. The spice is was the smallest ship you could carry three people in. Right. Yeah. 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 Two, two passengers. Two, two, passengers. two dead bodies. I, I got you, man. <laughs> um, but but the other cool thing is all the the little the little fridge with all the food and the respawning. It's got every drug, two of every drug, three bottles of water, four um little bars. So every Coffee time bars, you re yeah. every time you respawn it, you you don't have to go buy that stuff anymore because it's just all this little one stop shop for bunker missions. So it's it's very handy for the game right now. So yeah. Does that stuff auto replenish? Yeah, it does. Apparently, when you it's not persistent at the moment because of the way the game works right now but a couple of right, patches okay, from now it yeah. probably won't but it, it will be persistent so it won't respawn but at the moment yeah, yeah every time you and because it's so small you can re uh any landing pad in the game it could be respawned it's crazy so wait hold on you can sell that stuff right <laughs> is there a whole video in their space of you reclaiming just, like, and that's, just that's running a, bars that's out that's for a week no? you'd be there for ages doing it though mate you'd be there it would take True. so long True, but that is an unlimited commodity to sell if you can sell Unli that stuff. Yep, mm. unlimited commodity, and you, yeah. How to make a million dollars and lose your life in <laughs> three months to make yeah, a million, to make a million, million dollars. dollars? Yeah, in, in, in a month's time, yeah. Coming to a Space Tomato <laughs> channel near you. Very <laughs> peaceful money making. Takes, depends how long it takes to recharge uh, or to, to, to claim the, the C8R. Yeah, yeah. That's, it's, it's way too much work. Like, realistically speaking, I would never do that. Yeah, yeah. But it is there. Yeah, we that's a bust of the destroy video. If you've ever seen any of the stuff she's done, she's like filled an entire freelancer with candy bars called Buster Bars. Uh, so, Ooh, yum! So she's been yeah quite dedicated. All right, um, is there anything else you would like to add, uh, Mr. Al Garrod? Yeah, the one thing that I noticed is if you go to the, if when you look at the components on this, mm -hmm. the shields on the on the galaxy, you go, oh yeah, large size three shield. Mm -hmm. It's the same as a Connie. Yep. The same size um, shield as a Connie has, and yet it's double the size of a Connie. And you go, and it's the big brother. You go, huh? And then you compare it to the six hundred or the cat, mm. and they've got two or three shields. And you go, mm. yeah. And this is huh? a non-combat ship, so you'd almost expect the defenses yeah. to be higher and the and the offensive weapons to be less. And yet it's got size five anti-large ship weapons rather mm. than fighter weapons and or anti-fighter weapons and lower shields. So. I think that huh? I think that means they'll probably when they go back to the cat they'll up the guns on it because you obviously would assume a cat has better guns than um, an RSI. So yeah, I think they're gonna. I think that and those turrets do need to rework. They they're not that great on the cat. To uh, be honest with you, I'd expect this. I'd expect this not to have the large ship weapons. I'd expect it to have more anti fighter weapons and better sure, yeah. defense weapons. But it's 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 almost skewed. It's it's almost on its head. It's mm -hmm. got lower shields and heavy heavier anti-ship weapons where you'd expect an industry ship a non-combat yeah. ship to be mm. more defense and more anti-fighter mm. rather than big pew pew it's mm. it's almost a pirate ship in, mm. in that regard because it's got anti-ship weapons so how many did you pick up Algrid? we're all curious how many how many did you pick up one ccu good boy. one five dollar ccu with credits good boy me too that's all i picked up Space, um, are you, are you, can we twist your arm to pick up a CCU or not? <laughs> Just a no, CCU. man. I am, I, yeah, not putting money into this game. Um, but it's a, it's a good point. It doesn't feel like a fleet ship. It doesn't feel like the kind of ship that I'd mm. be going up against, like another, maybe another constellation. I don't know. But like, it's interesting that they are size five weapons on there. And mm. I, because when I was looking at these pictures uh, of it doing combat, like in our background, I was not thinking that those were larger weapons like mm -hmm. i haven't looked at the stats but um well it's only a reclaim is there... it's a redeemer and a half really isn't it well it's 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 probably similar to a redeemer if you think about the guns on it because you take the the size fours and the size threes off the pilot of the redeemer and merge them together you roughly get to size five plus then you've got the other two size five turrets so it's similar in 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 gun emplacement to a redeemer just similar. The difference right? is our team is a gunship. A That's yeah. a combat ship. <laughs> but, but, it's not a combat ship. Yeah. But you look at the medical ship. But you look at the price difference. There's only like what a, a fifty-five dollar price difference between the two at the moment. Well, obviously this will go up, but you get my whole point. Um, the way they the way they advertise combat in this game is is always kind of strange to me. I mean, I know mm -hmm. that it's a dangerous verse. Uh, mm -hmm. I get told that every time I bring this up, but like they. 
they put like the medical Pisces concepts image out there with it, mm. you know, flying through space, shooting at somebody. They put like the Argo raft out yep. there, shooting at somebody, the merchant man shooting at somebody. Like, well, it looks cool, doesn't it? That's why they do it. it yeah, <laughs> but like, you know, it, show me the ship doing the cool stuff that the ship yeah. is the, that other ships can't do. And I know that they put those images out there. It's just, mm. it always is a little weird to me yeah. the way that combat is focused so heavily on. And I know, again, I know the game is combat heavy. I'd actually like to ask um, Badges that question because to me, I think this is kind of a bit of a fleet ship. I think it's going to have to be with other ships and stuff like that. Um, just because of its role, you, you, you think it, like, you know, you go out, let's say you go out and you take it out as the refining ship. So you go out with a bunch of prospectors. Instantly, I go, you need a ship there to cover them. Uh, uh, you know, the same thing with the medical one. You go out there and you're doing a medical thing. You're going to need an escort. Um, so every every one of them, uh, to me, this is a, a fleet ship or a ship that needs escorts at the very least. I don't know. If, do you guys agree with that? or I kind of looked at it sort of like I look at the Expanse. Mm -hmm. Like maybe not necessarily yeah. a fleet, but definitely a ship for hire that's sort of just cruising around a system waiting to, to mm -hmm. hear from somebody that they need they need some support. Hagrid? Mm. Yeah, I... I think for the cargo variant, it just does, does what a cargo variant would do. So I don't think you need a fleet for that. Yeah, having having an escort ship for any cargo ship works in your favour. Mm. Um, but I'd still expect I'd still want more point defence turrets or anti fighter turrets. Just to me, that the turrets just seem out of place. Yeah. Uh, the medical ship. If you're doing that, you are going. You know, the other ships do seem to fit into that. You'd need to have other ships with you just to, but you could use them like like uh, space just said, just a ship for hire, an expanse type, um, a ship doing jo doing jobs as people require them or need them. Mm. Yeah, okay. Um, I think that kind of wraps it up for me. Unless you guys want to add any more, like for, for me, I, I I as I said, I came to that conclusion that yeah, it's a good ship. Um, for me, it's an earning game, and that sound, sounds a bit weird. Um, but but if I change my mind, I've got the CCU there for five bucks. So I think mm. that covers all my bases. Um, I think a lot of people did get kind of swallowed up in a bit of the hype because it is an RSI ship, and people like like you said, average, you're a big fan of RSI, um, yeah. and I, I do think it looks really nice. I, I love the interior. There's there's a lot to love about the look of it and everything like that. But fundamentally, when you break it down. Um, you know, you can look at it two different ways. Yeah. Like me and space look at it. Like for me, it's an earn down. For space, it's obviously an earn up. Yeah. 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 And and the other thing, like just to, to go back with a with a um six hundred i comparison, base this has sixty four units of cargo. Mm. The uh six hundred i has forty eight units of cargo, mm. in its in its thing. So whether that goes up with their rework. Yep. Given they've found so much cargo space they can put in that thing, yep. um, is another thing. But yep. I think you just see so many parallels where it sits between both of the, the cat and the, the 600. And then you ask the question, why do I need this? Yeah, I don't know the quite. And, the, it's, a hard, and it's, a hard, it's a hard answer because I, I like it, but. I don't quite know the number off the top of my head, but I know the cat's got more as well with its modules. Yep. Okay, I think it's like five, nine, six or something like that. But dude, please do not quote me on that because I don't know the exact number off the top of my head. Um, Quoted. <sighs> All right. Um, actually, speaking of quotes, can you say Perseus for me, please? Perseus. There we go. Got that. I don't. I don't know what that's all about. You're gonna say the most romantic oh, voice airy ever, like Barry White. <laughs> Just say Perseus. Yeah. Bar yeah. yeah let's do your Barry White impersonation. Uh, that's, that goes outside of my contract. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, what would you like to hear from people in the comments below, Space? What would you like to hear in regards to the uh, the RSI Galaxy? What, what, what you know? What would you like to hear from people? Do people think that modularity is going to be here anytime soon? I mean, mm. you know, I like, I just, I don't know what they're doing. I don't know mm. what they're doing with the ship or with modularity. Mm. And I just don't feel like we have a good idea of where they are on modularity. Mm. They haven't really talked too much about the work behind it. So I guess I want to hear from people if they think that this is a sign that modularity is coming anytime soon or mm. if we should expect to see this three four years down the line i think i'll add to that then and i'll say do you think the modules for this ship make it too strong you know like it's got some 
pretty up their modules, especially if they're adding something like manufacturing. That's like four really big things. Well, like okay, three. The cargo is meh. But you get what I mean? Like it's it's quite strong uh, as were strip tens. Agrid, what would you like to hear from people yeah. in the comments below? I think I think similar to what you wanted, you're asking X, because what you said earlier about is this really the the RSI ship encapsulating all the large ship variants for all the professions. Mm -hmm. Put them all in one package and you don't have, you know, it's less work. But uh, is that where we're going? Is that where, mm -hmm. where you think they're going? And, and also, what are your thoughts on the Galaxy's anti-large ship weapons when it's not a combat ship? Mm -hmm. Space, where can people find you on the interwebs? All over the place. Uh, YouTube. Twitter, Twitch. <laughs> Just splattered everywhere. All the things. Yeah, yeah. Space Tomato Gaming is the easiest way to find me. Just Google search it. It'll, yeah. it'll come up that way. But I, I do most of my stuff on YouTube. Yeah. Well, as do we. We're, we're, we're a dying yeah. breed at this point. But yeah. All right. Um, don't forget to like this video or dislike this video or subscribe and uh, ring that notification bell. We've been getting a lot of people uh, not uh, seeing our, not our videos. So make sure you turn on all notifications because we're getting reports that uh, people are missing them. So yeah, please do that if, if you want to see it. If you want to go an extra mile on Patreon as well, uh, you can do that. Uh, for as little as one dollar a month um and there are other little perks like there are a bunch of people listening to us right now and um that's usually reserved for patreons so yeah mm -hmm. all right with that and there's also the there's also the youtube membership that people can take sure. and occasionally we do do stuff on twitter on not twitter on twitch, twitch so do you know actually i signed us up for a TikTok. Uh, the other day, good. we now have a TikTok hey. account. Yeah, so we're going we, we, to... That's, th that's something I'm going to look at doing between all the infrarunners is see if we can do some little short... Because you know you're going to do shorts uh, space for Yeah, for I can't wait to see the uh, so we can just execute use... algorithm dances. But, oh, you heard about that. Oh, you heard about that. Right, yeah. So, no, but I thought all of us as infrarunners could just that's do like... That's what the Uwu girls do, mate. Yeah. That's what the Uwu girls do. Little one-minute conversations with each other that we just post on space, uh, on on YouTube. So I could just have a question for you and you could reply via a short. I thought that'd just be kind of cool. And you could do it on your channel yeah. and on Infrunners at the same time. So we could just have this conversation thing that's all done in video. I don't know. We'll see how it turns out. All right, with that, he's been our good. I've been executed. He's been Space Tomorrow. That's been Space Tomorrow. We'll catch here. you in the next one.